continuing on our syllabus with macro theories. And I said macro theories are different than the different research traditions, uh, like Malthusianism or populationism, eco-Marxism, and things like that. We're going to concentrate on issues of how environmental sociology has organized uh, or encouraged a discussion of our social world as innately an environmental organization too. So our social world and environmental world as the same interaction. And last time, of course, we talked about biomes, if you remember, as one way of thinking local issues. We talked about the interaction of genes, cultures, and food systems over long periods of time where genes slowly come to reflect a regional cuisine. That's a fascinating book if you'd like to look at that. It's called Why Some Like It Hot. Uh, on top of this, I said we can add organiz more organizational levels. Last time we looked at Carnero, his ideas of states uh, coming about because of warfare, but only because of warfare in certain ecological contexts. Um, you needed the ecological context, he said, to force people to accept the hierarchy. Typically, people would escape, he argued, and never would build a large, stratified society until they were forced to by deserts, marshes, or lack of agricultural land. Uh, bodily, I mentioned, just to show you that this kind of state that Carnero describes only controlled half of the world's land in 1950. So uh, I think that's an important knowledge that most of our history is involved with these local genetic, cultural, and food system interactions, uh, and not a larger state territorial arrangement until the 19th century. We talked about diamond, the particulars of different animals, as well as food crops in different regions, giving people the materials to build more hierarchical societies in some places more than other places. I talked about urbanization. We talked about states in the environment, and then we talked about urbanization in the environment last time with my PowerPoint dealing with raw materials of textiles and how they influenced the division of labor or the stratification systems in urban sites. Today, we'll continue with organizational issues. Dreisen, he argues uh, similarly Carriero, that uh, concentration on states, but the concentration is on how states interact with environmental movements. He argues there is a common global environmental movement, but it doesn't exist in a global way. It always exists in a particular cultural form. And it's this interaction between state elite decisions and local activist decisions that creates four different kinds of you know, green social movement. And he says there's a useful way to think about the global green social movements uh, with this typology. I have a PowerPoint summarizing that. After this, we'll talk a bit about Jasper's um, axial religions, which is the large-scale frameworks of religion losing their environmental and cultural connections this gets into some of my work. We'll specifically talk about e what I call ecological revolution. What are the environmental contexts in which people adopt new forms of identity, and new forms of religion? I argue a lot of human history and environmental history are connected within religious movements. And I'll detail more description about that later. Sing Chu also, another environmental sociologist, will summarize some of his book work. He argues also, similar to me, that there is a long history of environmental problems. That environmental problems are not new, they're very ancient. And he also argues that different cultural movements of religion have been built into environmental movements. But he draws his work on what is called world systems theory. World systems theory, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that in the PowerPoint uh, in a moment. We'll also talk about global commodity chains, 
creating a world system in the 1500s with European expansion. Previously, most states were local, and international trade was very thin. Increasingly, world trade is larger, and state economies get very thin. And how do we comprehend this environmental world where a huge portion of our trade now is not within a state political economy, but between them. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, if you summarize the amount that South Korea exports and imports, you know, people who use these statistics would say, you know, we obviously have 100% of the exports and 100% imports. Um, if you total this, the total amount that Korea exports is almost right around 50%. So half of what is produced here goes into the world system. And the imports, it's almost 42%. So consumption is not entirely domestic either. It comes from the world system. And it's 92.3. South Korea has the highest ratio of global dependence in any state in the world. So that's a, one of the, another special things uh, that I keep track of in thinking about South Korea. But Korea, the Korean example definitely illustrates a uh, world systems view of the economy. Uh, we'll talk about dependency theory later, world systems theory, and update to this with global cities. We will talk a little bit about eco-Marxism versus ecological modernization. I will skip uh, neo-Malthusianism to save time. Um, and later in the course, we will talk more about inconspicuous consumption, the idea that what we consume is not entirely cultural. For instance, the light switch on the wall. I can turn it on or off, but I don't have control over whether the electricity comes from nuclear power or solar power. I would like to have that choice. But uh, Shove and Ward, they argue a lot about our consumption is not about the colors of clothes or the styles of ties. Most sociologists have analyzed consumption as if it was a cultural thing only. They argue there's a lot of major things that we consume that we do not consider as cultural. Electricity, water, gasoline. And these have huge environmental repercussions, environmental problems. And they find it strange because uh, we have to talk more about the infrastructure of our consumption and not the culture of our consumption when we talk about uh, inconspicuous consumption. Um, I have some examples that I'll talk about later. Um, I know on the web you can find a copy with Korean subtitles of this movie called Who Killed the Electric Car? It's about the politics of removing that electric car as a choice. Uh, and about 10 years ago, Ford and national companies, Ford, Honda, uh, Nissan, and General Motors, they all made completely electric cars, but then they stopped making them, they never advertised them, and they crushed their models that worked. The film explores the politics of why consumers did not have much decision uh, into keeping the electric car. And we'll talk more about my work later in a politicized consumptive infrastructure, um, talking about a raw material regime, the economic and political regime of certain materials against other choices, oil versus solar. There's little discussion in environmental sociology besides me right now, talking about conflict between materials. And I think that's a very useful method to explore the hybrid issue of environmental sociology. And that is the short summary that we uh, looked at last time.